Live here on Balance of Power. So, you know, by the time we go to bed tonight, I guess we'll have a pretty good sense of this, but it won't be lasting beyond tomorrow when the president has promised to sign this. So it does seem, while we have to go through the motions, we've got to clear a couple of hurdles here. Uh, the die has been cast. And I'm curious what Bob Inglis thinks about all of this, watching from afar in South Carolina. Former Republican congressman, he's now executive director of RepublicNEN.org. And Congressman, it's great to have you with us today on Balance of Power. I want to back up just a day and talk about what happened in the House. Actually, it's a couple days. Forgive me at this point. It was over the weekend when Mike Johnson actually brought these four bills to the floor, got him passed in the, in the face of a threat to fire him. Is he going to end up looking like the smartest guy in the room, cutting these into separate pieces, getting them passed, shipping it to the Senate in basically the same form that Joe Biden asked for months ago, all the while it seems like he's keeping his job. Bob, what do you see? Yeah, I think probably so. Um, and you know, it's it's really sort of us as Americans uh, recognizing the the gift we've got in our history. You know, in that chamber that uh, Senate Speaker Johnson presides over, there are only two portraits. One of is uh, uh, George Washington, of course. The other is a Marquis de Lafayette. The Frenchman who helped George Washington and who helped bring in the French into the fight that we were having with the British. If it weren't for the French help, we wouldn't have made it. And so it's sort of appropriate that that's right now in the House chamber. Those two portraits are hanging and that's what's happening. We are helping a startup called Ukraine fight a world power called Russia. And so it's really us coming to recognize our history and our obligation to really to history to uh, to sort of repay the favor. I love the optics uh, that you're you're painting there. Uh, what happened to Mike Johnson over the past couple of months? Was it the classified intelligence briefings was the meetings with foreign leaders or was it just getting cover from Donald Trump in the end that brought him to this point? You know, I think it is a fascinating thing because I think what it is, is a study in leadership. What happens is, you know, when you don't have any real authority or power, you can just sound off and say all kinds of things. But when you realize, oh my gosh, I've got power here. I really need to act responsibly. And I think that's what Mike Johnson has done. He's acted responsibly. And um, it, it's the sort of the growing up that happens when somebody actually comes out of the hinterlands and into real power. He's got real power. He's a speaker of the House of Representatives and he's functioning, he's making the House function the way it should, which is put it on the floor, let the people's representatives vote, and let's see how mm -hmm. it goes. And interestingly enough, it went with a lot of Democrat and Republican agreement. And then there's some people that disagree. Yeah. That's fine. They get to hear their, we get to hear them, but but uh, leadership requires um, re real uh, thought and carrying through on things that matter. I'm really taken by how many people are offended by that a congressman uh, threatening to fire the speaker over this. We keep uh, hearing from people coming on this program talking about a coalition government that we now have. We're all going to be speaking with English accents here at some point. Um, what do you make of that? Is it a coalition government or is it just a functioning government? Well, it wouldn't be. I think it's a functioning government. And I think if you ask most Americans, they'd say, isn't that great? I mean, you do have <laughs> activists on both sides, on the left and on the right. And the problem really that we're having as American finding solutions to things like climate change, for example, is that the politicians have to play to those activists. And those activists, they really don't want solutions. They just want to sound off. Um, and so most Americans actually want solutions. And, uh, you know, in climate change, for example, they, the water is coming up. They want a solution. And so as it can really help you if somebody's sounding off way over on the left or sounding off way over on the right? No, it's not going to help you at all. The water's coming up. Huh. Well, you got a break with your uh, party when it comes to the issue of climate change. What's next? We're going to see Mike Johnson bring a climate bill to the floor. 
<laughs> that'd be great, wouldn't it? Uh, because really, that would that'd be terrific. That's the kind of leadership that we would expect when somebody grows up. And I think he is growing up. And um, I'm impressed. I don't really know him, but uh, but I'm very glad for what I'm seeing. And I think it, I've seen it before, and we'll see it again, is that once people get power and are actually called on to perform a valid function, rather than mm. act like one of these bomb throwers, they don't have any power. All they do is just talk to uh, media outlets and, uh, and generate money for themselves and their own campaigns. Um, that's not leadership. And so, so it's really great to see the House functioning. Hmm. Sounds like you miss it. Um, the, the thing is, Mike Johnson's got a big bodyguard who walks everywhere with him in the schoolyard right now, and that's Donald Trump. And Donald Trump can be pretty volatile about the way he feels about people. What happens when he wakes up one morning and decides this isn't worth it? Yeah, I don't know. That's what uh, I wonder if he'll ever grow up, uh, frankly, um, and uh, whether he'll ever realize, hey, you know what? You had power for those four years. Uh, you could have done something with it. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think it's not his shtick. His shtick seems to be more to just uh, play to a crowd that uh, and, and take a bow and uh, and, and uh, feed his uh, personality needs. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, maybe, maybe he could grow up, I don't know. But uh, we as Americans need to insist on leaders growing up and saying, listen, what we want is solutions. We don't want all this talk. We want solutions. And um, it, it really isn't coming upon us. You know, most people say, Congress doesn't listen to us. Actually, they do. Mm -hmm. They listen very carefully. And what they've heard us saying is from the activists, the left-wing activists, the right-wing activists, we want you to go up there and rail against the other side. Oh, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, and sure. Don't worry, we don't need you to do anything. But if we told mm -hmm. them, no, we need you to do something, they'd do it. All of that said, if you were still on the House floor, would you expect Democrats to vote to protect Mike Johnson if it came to it? Yes, and that will be the test of whether the Democrats are growing up. And it, it really is a crucial test. Um, I, I, I thought they should have done that in the case of Kevin McCarthy, and they did not. Mm -hmm. So now they've got a chance to show that, no, really, they do put the country first. And in this case, it's up to them. It will be up to them because of the very small margin on the Republican side. So it is incumbent on Democrats mm -hmm. to grow up and to say, hey, this is about the country and us fulfilling our obligations as really stewards of that message of freedom that France helped us with and we won. Now Ukraine's doing that um, and we need to help them against this, this Russian thing. And so it really is a moment for Democrats to decide country or uh, partisanship. And do you really want to throw the country into chaos with another speaker election that'll go on forever. Really, is that what you want to do? Or do you want to accept the reality, oh, this is sort of a consensus government. And what's wrong with that? I think we just spawned a new segment, Growing Up with Bob Inglis. Let's do this again, Bob, the former congressman from South Carolina, republicn.org. This is Bloomberg. Bloomberg.